The next row we're going to focus on are the uh, antilopenic agents. Um, these are uh, used to treat atherosclerosis by lowering blood cholesterol, triglycerides, and low-density lipids, also known as LDLs. Um, these medications are always used in conjunction with diet, weight control, and exercise to reduce atherosclerosis. Examples of the drug drugs, um, we've got uh, the bile acid sequestrants, um, such as uh, you know, a cholestivam. I mean, you see the three that I've got listed here. Um, these bi um, bind bile acids in the intestine, causing increased fecal excretion, which increases production of bile acids from cholesterol to replace the, replace the supply of bile acids in the liver, thus lowering LDL cholesterol. Um, next ones are the uh, the fibric acid derivatives, uh, such as tricord and lopid. These act by inhibiting lipolysis and triglyceride um, synthesis. Now you also have the uh, the HMG CoA reductase inhibitors, such as your Lipitor, your Zocor, you know that sort of thing. You also known as you know like the Simvastin, that sort of thing. You, you notice that the uh, statin is at the end of the generics and or ends the trade names. These all act by inhibiting um, the HMG-CoA reductase, the enzyme that initiates cholesterol synthesis, thus lowering LDL, VLDL, and triglycerides, and raising your good cholesterol, HDL. Um, next is uh, niacin, drug on its own, um, at doses of 100 to 300 times RDA, is a vitamin. Niacin will decrease VLDL and triglycerides and increase HDL. All the very effective side effects, such as flushing and itching, are common. And finally, we have Zestia, or Zetia, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Cholesterol absorption inhibitor, that is what that is. It can be used with HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. Adverse effects in nursing care for all of the above. You have your GI effects, such as nausea, vomiting, constipation, all that fun stuff. You're going to include, um, f encourage fluids and high fiber diet to combat the uh, constipation. You're going to also possibly need, most likely need, a fat soluble vitamin such as A, D, K, and folic acid in a water soluble form, so deficiencies of the vitamins A, D, K will not occur. A fat soluble, soluble vitamin may become deple depleted when antilipemics are administered for a pro prolonged period of time, which is a very common thing. Uh, you're going to also want to observe for bleeding tendencies because vitamin K may go down the tube. And as you know, vitamin K is a rolling blooding um, blood clotting, and so decreased vitamin K equals bleeding tendencies. Uh, monitor cholesterol and serum triglyceride levels. You're going to want to do a 12-hour fasting for accurate blood levels and to measure the effectiveness of medications. If a medication is not effective, it should be discontinued. Teach patients to follow diet low in cholesterol and saturated fats and high in fiber. Weight loss and exercise are also a part of the therapeutic regimen. Blurred vision is a possible and sometimes common uh, side effect. You're going to want to encourage regular eye exams. Cataracts have also been seen in clients taking Lovastin and other medications of similar sorts. Um, muscle pain, also known as melasia. And uh, the breakdown of muscle fibers resulting in the release of muscle fiber context, uh, contents, a.k.a. myoglobin, into the bloodstream. This, of course, is the definition of that big, long word. Starts with an R, next to Malaysia. Not fun, I'm not going to try it. Anyway, um, clients um, taking uh, HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors may in have these two possibilities, and these can be fatal, so and uncomfortable. Um, also, um, for any of these medications, you're going to want to monitor liver function tests. Bile acid sequestration should not be taken at the same time as other medications because they interfere with the medication absorption, and so medication should be taken one hour before or four hours after antilipemics. And as I mentioned earlier, um, you're going to want to expect that a patient who's on antilipemics to be on them as a long-term therapy if they are effective. The next category of drugs we're going to talk about is the antihypertensives. Um, just as a little review, um, antihypertensive agents lower blood pressure by decreasing constrictive constriction of the blood vessels using various mechanisms. Um, just in general, adverse effects in nursing care for antihypertensives are going to want to look for orthostatic hypertension. 
um, and related symptoms such as dizziness, because these may be seen with, vaso um, with the administration of all types of antihypertensives. Um, Antihypertensives reduce peripheral vasoconstriction and thus decrease in peripheral vasoconstriction often causes orthostatic hypertension. Blood pressure should be taken in both the supine and upright positions. Nursing care for all patients receiving antihypertensive agents include teaching them to change positions slowly. Teach patients to avoid very hot baths or in showers. This causes even more vasodilation. Also avoid alcohol um, because this causes vasodilation. Um, another adverse effect, rebound, hypertension when discontinuing um, medications abruptly. So t tell patients never to stop taking their medications. You know, just subtly. They should be weaned off them. Teach patients to report adverse effects, um, adverse reactions promptly, and uh, do not take over the kind of medications, especially cold, medica cold medications, without a physician approval, because drug interactions may occur with antihypertensives. The nurse should assess the other medications be being taken by a patient on antihypertensives. Teach the patient to always inform their healthcare provider of all medications being taken. Okay, now we're going to actually talk about the different types of uh, categories of antihypertensives. You've got your central acting drugs, also known as alpha, alpha agonists. Two drugs in this category are catapress and aldabet. Um, they depress the activity of the sympathetic nervous system, um, thus causing antihypertension. Um, adverse effects for these drugs include dry mouth and constipation. Next category are the ACE inhibitors. ACE, of course, mean, uh, standing for angiotensin converting enzyme. An ACE inhibitor prevents conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, a potent vasoconstrictor, and also decreases aldosterone secretion. Aldosterone causes sodium and fluid retention. I have a number of medications listed in this category, um, including uh, lotensin and altase, zestril, you name it, it's there. Um, adverse effects for this category include blood um, dicrasis, uh, which roughly translated, you know, imbalance or just sickness of the blood. Um, angioedema, renal failure, hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, mind you, rash, fever, and cough. Because of the serious side effects, these medications are usually given to patients whose blood pressure has not been controlled with less um, toxic medications. Um, Catapril should be taken one hour before meals because food decreases absorption. Uh, next we've got the vasodilators, um, such as your um, epresoline. Uh, this acts directly on the smooth muscle to lower blood pressure. Adverse effects include headache, tachycardia, angina, palpitations, and sodium retention. And it should be given with meals to increase absorption. And continuing with the antihypertensive train of thought, we've also got the alpha adrenic blockers. Um, they block the alpha adrenic receptors, um, causing peripheral vascular dilation, resulting in decreased blood pressure and relax in mus relaxation of muscles of bladder and prostate. Uh, three drugs listed all have sin at the end, or zasin. I don't know. Cardura, I've seen that one a lot. Um, I haven't seen many press or hygiene, but then you never know, drugs, you know, doctors might just like them in certain places. Anyway, side note, sorry. Um, note that the generic names for all of these, as I just pointed out amazingly, are uh, Zosin, Z O S I N. Uh, first dose is given at bedtime to decrease hypotension, hypo. Um, Doxosin and terazosin. Sorry about the butchering. Um, they are frequently used in men who have benign prostate hypotrophy (BPH) to decrease urinary retention and difficulty urinating. Beta blockers discussed earlier are often used to lower blood pressure. And finally, we have the angiotensin II receptor antagonist. Um, this competes with angiotensin II at receptor binding sites, decreasing peripheral vascular vasoconstriction, and is similar to an ACE inhibitor. However, they do not cause a cough like an ACE inhibitor may. Uh, three drugs in this category, Cozar, Diovan, Avapro. Adverse effects, fatigue, GI symptoms including pain, 
dys uh, dyspepsia and diarrhea, and beta blockers, as discussed earlier, are often used to lower blood pressure.